I'm Ralph. I'm a PhD student. I'm in my fifth year and I work at the BMBM lab at the Stevens Institute of Technology. What we do in our lab is study the fundamental science and engineering behind additive biomanufacturing. Basically, a research lab. We don't develop end-use products. We definitely work with the hospitals and with doctors for their specific applications and research. So one interesting application that we have, we work on placenta diseases. We get like the placental cells from the hospital, we print them here and we study them in the lab and we image them and we see over time what, how the cells are interacting. Biomaterials are we're not only talking of biocompatible polymers or plastics, no, no, we're talking about hydrogels, soft gelatinous material in which we can incorporate cells. And you can print directly the structure with the cells inside and the cells will grow in that environment, eventually become a tissue or an organ. We have developed this quad extrusion head and it's all made of 3D printed parts except the extrusion uh, stepper motors in the back. And this is all 3D printed on the raised 3D. We install this on any open source 3D printers. It can go into this extruder that we designed. And now this can be controlled in extruding the material inside this syringe. And we have four of them so we can practically extrude four materials in the same print. Imagine you have an organ with multiple cell types, so we can print them all in a single print. Extrusion nozzles, which are also swappable, so we can kind of remove them and exchange them with different sizes and different configurations. We're basically 3D printing bioprinters, completely designed and modeled uh, by me. And I feel like I always knew about raised 3D, so before coming to do my PhD, I had my own 3D printing business. Raised 3D was always on my radar. And then I'm here in the lab doing some bioprinting and then we wanted some new printers. So I was like, let's go for Raised 3D. For example, this thing, this little white thing needs to go up and down and you have three gears on top rotating. So if you don't have proper uh, tolerances and smooth surfaces, you would have so much issues whether it's the cost of uh, producing those prototypes. The time to failure is so fast, so we can very quickly iterate and come up with new models and new designs. And this has been very helpful. We're also in the academic field, in the research academic field, so we need to publish a lot. So when we're publishing and there's something wrong, so we can quickly update and like modify, come up with a prototype and then go test it. So this is very helpful. Without 3D printing, it's practically impossible to do that. So I really love the slicer. It gives like consistent and solid results and the tool paths are really nice. I also use it by the way to 3D print the biomaterial. I can put any structure and I control, I can control the direction and angle of the infill and the tool path, which is pretty awesome. Since it's uh, kind of open source, we can also use it for many things.